Good afternoon, everyone. Highest recorded temperatures in Antarctica. Oh, that was in 2015. And the Antarctic sea ice is crashing to record low. Sounds like a panic headline. But when you dig into it, they say, well, you can't really draw any conclusion from this. David Evans predicting a 3 tenths degree C drop starting right now as our sun finally turns back on after two weeks of absolutely no activity. Yet this entire activity cycle takes us back into solar cycle five, way back in the late 1700s. And the reason our sun is behaving so erratically is it's an electric star. Small voltage shifts will be showing changes as this regulates through the photosphere. Solar polar fields behaving strangely. That would be expected when you have a DC current driving the sun in the solar magnetic sheath. Also Greenland ice increasing. Good afternoon everyone. In your face. This is how they're going to explain how the planet's cooling due to the grand solar minimum. U.S. scientists launched the world's biggest solar geoengineering study. What they're trying to do is diffuse the amount of sunlight reaching the planet's surface, which is going to cause cooling. At first, they claim they're going to use ice crystals released from a hot air balloon to create a fine spray that mimics what happens in a volcanic eruption that blocks out the sun. This has been ongoing with the stratospheric aerosol geoengineering program delivered by airliners. So much so that now they even need to include new cloud types to explain what we're seeing in the skies. Before, during, and after. Our sun is at the lowest it's been since 1755 in activity. Weeks long stints of no sunspot activity and that shouldn't be happening for three more years. Solar cycle 24 right back to solar cycle 5 in 1700s. They have to explain the drop off in TSI. They have to explain the drop offs in temperature and they have to explain the increasing ice over Greenland. It's not because of CO2 and here they are. They're going to come out with this excuse that they're now going to use ice crystals and they're responsible for the temperature drops on the earth when it is fully natural cycle. Good afternoon, everyone. Update on the Kambalni eruption in Kamchatka increasing in intensity. Volcanic ash plume extending hundreds of miles now, 30,000 plus feet in the air. New eruptions underwater in the Dragon's Triangle south of Tokyo. One day it's an underwater plume, the next day it's in a full eruption. A look at sea surface temperatures looking really cold in the Indian Ocean. Bird flu epidemic killing tens of millions of birds across Asia. Food prices increasing as well as ice volcanoes on the Great Lakes. Good afternoon, everyone. Kambali volcano in Kamchatka Peninsula, Russia. Beautiful, unexpected eruption. First eruption in 248 years, yet a most violent eruption in 600. Plumes above 26,000 feet. In John Casey's new book, Upheaval, he details increases in volcanism and earthquakes at the bottom of grand solar minimums. We are entering one right now. This takes us back 600 years. And you'll notice the VEI 6 and 7 right at the bottoms as well of these solar minimums. Unexpected events 7,000 years ago, intense cosmic ray bombardment. Good afternoon, everyone. As always, ever present signs of climate change in the past when it was much warmer than today. Also the IPCC, the cloud process, uncertain of the changes in the climate system because of clouds, which means them not able to explain Antarctica gains greater than losses. They're confused somehow in the cloud circulation pattern that's increasing ice on Antarctica. And when we look at the Southern Hemisphere ice area, you don't see anything out of the ordinary even in 2017. Global ice conditions for you, as well aerial farms, vertical farming in cities, in disuse factories, that's 130 times more productive than field farming. 